Oh, yummy. That's good. That is good. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fucking Jami Conquest. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode. Do you want me to take over? <laughs> no, I'm still going. Like, what we want an episode. This is oh, this is the Conquest. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. This is Conquest. Twenty-seven. Today we are joined by the Big Max and Chicken Nugget Enjoyer, Alex. <laughs> what? I'm uh, glad to be here. <laughs> We've got uh, Destiny to enjoy her himself. <laughs> Me. He Presumably. is here. And we've we've got the fucking the myth. The fucking legend beast. Thank you so much for having me. Um I'm here all week. <laughs> so beast, tell me, what have you been eating lately? Uh fingernails, toenails, uh <laughs> skin. And the bit the bit yeah, the bit of skin by the fingernails. Whatever you can get your hands on really, I guess. Whatever's on your hands, not whatever you can get your hands on. <laughs> yeah, your hands yeah on. whatever is on my hands. <laughs> Whatever's flaking <laughs> off, yeah. <laughs> and on the subject of bit of skin by a fingernail, there's been a bit of drama this week. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Oh, well, Patreon. What? Uh, hello, thank you, Patreons. Please head over to our Patreon and uh, <laughs> give us a nice sub. <laughs> okay, Add continue. it to your favourites, like and subscribe. <laughs> rate us on iTunes. Yeah, please give us a little rate. As long as it's iTunes five rate. or uh, or higher. I don't want to see it if it's anything lower. Anyway, James, please continue. So, my good beast just made a reference to fingernails, and I have a story about nails. Oh, you actually do. Should I put it on screen, or should I wait for you to describe it first? So, should you put it on screen at all already? I know. Picture <laughs> the environment. Debating. It's a nice Monday morning. I'm about to go to work. I'm on the floor. Playing. Not playing. I'm, I'm putting my shoes on. And Gareth <laughs> was sat there in front of me. He didn't look happy. He didn't look amused. And I started playing with his mouth. And as 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 happens, the he bit me. Um, well, do, can you can he, you clarify he, something before you go on? Yes. What does playing with his mouth mean? What does that mean? <laughs> do you, did you put mouth. your hand in his mouth and go like? Did you do that bullshit? Pretty, almost. Pretty <laughs> much did do that. Because I do... I Right, when we're playing, I do do that. Because he's like growling with a toy and I just... Uh, mm -hmm. But this on this morning, he wasn't he wasn't playing. He was kind of just like... Furious. He just got, got up. He just got up. He was not like in a playful mood. And then here I am sticking my fucking hand in his mouth. And he fucking... He chomped down. And this chomp down was the worst chomp down yet. And he caught me right by my fingernail. Is this the worst so, bite you've ever got from him? Yes. Worst bite I got. It happened because obviously Ray bit down by the fingernail. Obviously his lower teeth did the bottom of my finger as well. So he got me in two places. And as soon as it happened, like I tried to get my finger out of his mouth. But it's like the finger was so deep in the hole. that I couldn't actually pull my finger out because his, his teeth were still there. Oh no. And at this point, I was just like, "Holy shit!" Because I, I I get bitten by him sometimes, like play fighting and not and whatnot. So I've had nips, like small nips that have like caused a little bit of blood. But I'm used. I'm just that's fine. That's just like a little nip. And normally it's just like, oh, I just you know clean it off and it's fine. But this one was like, this actually is agonizing. So I was like fucking in shock by the fucking sink, and then I vomited. Oh really? I vomited. Yeah, I vomited all over the sink. Oh my took God. about an hour just kind of sitting there like fuck and it was bleeding excessively at this point <clears throat> so i was like oh i uh better better kind of tell work that i've been sick and whatnot so I told work had the day off and i wrapped my finger in a plaster and it <sighs> after wrapping my finger in the plaster for the next like three days it was agonizingly painful because you know when you got like a cut and you can feel the like pulsing going through the cut mm -hmm. where it's like kind of healing it was like that but my entire finger every hour it was like agonizing pain like i could feel my finger constantly in like pain yeah it throbs yeah and it was not good i couldn't sleep i couldn't do anything with my hand 
Did you like disinfect it or anything? <laughs> I I did at the time, and then because I put the plaster on it, obviously the plaster getting covered in blood and whatnot just doesn't help. So then the day before, this was Thursday, I decided you know take the plaster off, clean it. So I did, you know, get, get put like anti some cream on it and everything to try and help it, and it was all fine. It hurt. I sellotaped my fingers together because this is my middle finger we're talking about. I sellotaped my my fingers together to try and help sleep because it's more comfortable having two t tied together. So I got up in the morning, went to work, and I got into work and I looked at my finger and it was fucking like it was it was bright red and like kind of turning purple. Yeah, like by yeah, the the joint, and I I I, I was like. This doesn't look good. So I sent you guys a picture of it. I was just like, uh, yeah, oops. And that's when you guys uh, told me that maybe I should go to a doctor. I should go right. to yeah. the MIU, the Mine Injuries Unit. So I, I had the first stage of my work have a look, and it was like, he's an ex-army guy, and he was like, yeah, that doesn't look good. You should get that checked. My, my boss said the same thing. So and I, there I was, in the middle of a fucking pandemic, needing to go to the doctor's. Oh dear. And no joke, this is the best experience I've ever had of the NHS. Really? The Where did you have to go? Experience. Was it in our I, town I had, or did you have to go somewhere bigger? I had to go to Chippenham because that's like the, uh -huh. the local yeah. minor injuries unit. But it's not walk in. You can't go there. You have to get an appointment through the NHS um, like phone line. Mm -hmm. So I, I called up the MIU direct and said... Because instead of going straight to the NHS line, if I call them and say, like, this is a thing, could I come down? And they're like, yeah, that sounds quite bad. Call this and they'll book an appointment. So I called the NHS line. And when you call it, it goes to like a call center somewhere and they will go through your symptoms. So they'll go through, like, mm -hmm. what is if it's a bite, if it's a burn to try and. Because in that case, if it's minor, they could be like, no, you don't need to go here. If you do these things, it could help. So I explained everything going on. I explained how it was like turning like bright red and purple um, and the pain and the blood flow. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound good. So they booked me in with the, the local place. They called me. They booked a time. Within calling them, they were like, how quickly can you get here? Um, and they were like, I said, pretty quickly. So I had, I had to get there within an hour. Got there. Um, you can't. You don't walk in. You go to the front door and you put. you like go to the key code thing. And you say you've got an appointment. They come out. They they get your details. They take you. From walking in and walking out is about 15 minutes. So that's oh. walking in with the, the finger. Then coming out completely bandaged up with drugs. The best I've ever, ever seen of the NHS. And it's because. I think it's because. It's because obviously people don't want to go to like a doctor's because COVID. Big concern. Well, if you're going to catch it anywhere. It's going to be in a yeah. hospital or doctor's. So, But I think having things be appointment only is kind of i think is better because it means people aren't walking in with minor things like really minor things because if you're calling a line and being like oh i've got these symptoms they give you the feedback you need to know what to do so it's, it's kind of funneling the people who really do need attention straight to where it needs to be if you know what i mean but i just it's shocked yeah. i was shocked how good it was yeah isn't that how like some other countries do it where there's like national health care but there's like a small fee for just little checkups to kind of dissuade people just coming in yeah, for every I single think, thing they could possibly yeah. think of because i know like nhs at the moment and uh, healthcare in general is so just overburdened with you know covid stuff so just having yeah. a really good experience really opened my mind to like what can change to make the healthcare system better Mm -hmm. But basically, it was a good experience, but they came in, they, they, they cleaned up the cut, it was quite deep, they had to squeeze all of the blood out, because of so much blood had built in the finger, they had to just like squeeze it and like, just get all of the, the like, all the blood that's just been yeah. in the, yeah, out of the finger and it fucking hurt. And then they cleaned it all up, wrapped it in honey. Oh, honey? Uh, yeah, honey. Really? Did they say why? Because, like, honey medical strips, it's just got honey on. It's really good for antibacterial and anti-inflammation. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's been used in dressings for, like, fucking decades. Oh. So they, they put honey on it, and they they fully wrapped it up. It's, I've just, my finger's fucking huge now, because I've got a proper bandage <laughs> on it. And I've got a nice a nice course of drugs, and I'm going back tomorrow on Monday, so when this airs, to uh, get it rechecked. But, yeah, my finger is still horribly painful. So that is my... um. 
hospital trip this COVID pandemic. Has it, has it impeded your driving? Uh, no, <laughs> it hasn't. Did because they give I spent you a sticker for being a good boy. <laughs> yeah, lollipop. Spent... Yeah, they did. <laughs> I wish they did. <laughs> but I spent a whole year learning to drive with only one hand. So like this is this doesn't make any difference to my driving, which is good. But yeah, that's a, that's that's the most exciting thing that's happened in my life as of late. Yeah, oh, thanks so for telling my, us. My... Um, I did I did flash the picture on screen a couple times on the jar dock for those watching. Um, I might delete it now though, just in case. <laughs> it's pretty gross. It's not as bad as when uh, you fell off your bike and your bike fell on you though. We showed that in a cast, yeah. and that that's way nastier. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that nasty. Old YouTube. This is that was old YouTube. True, true, true. And that wasn't like a bite. That was like a sc slicing part of my ankle off. But this is like a bite. So it kind of looks worse to an extent because you can just see like the fucking hole. It's not nice, but it's my own fault. Like, like it's not guys' fault. I'm the fucking idiot here who did it. So, yeah. What lesson have you learned? None. <laughs> I've I've not learned anything. But yeah. Just don't just don't just don't do dumb things with dogs. They might look cute, but they can fuck you up. Yeah, yeah they'll get angry and fucking get you. Like even Argy's bit me, like didn't Argy bite me over like Christmas? Uh he, he did go He got me quite good. He did go a bit mental on Christmas Day from yeah. memory. Just too much hype. Yeah, just dogs are just. Just remember, dogs can are just quite. They can even if they're like the lovely dog, they've still got fucking razor sharp teeth and um, like claws. A stupid amount of power in their jaw. Like dogs, just they can fuck you up. So just don't be me. Don't follow my example. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling everyone about the. Yeah. Just the now. Violence. Now on to brighter things. Brighter things like um, how much money would be in my. Uh, stock account if I'd held on to my GameStop shares mm. that I bought <laughs> in the in the first lockdown I was like oh GameStop's like fucking worthless I, I got like a few shares when it was it was genuinely like worthless it was like four dollars a share or something so and I bought it some did there. increase yeah it increased a tiny bit but I was like I genuinely was convinced GameStop was like gonna go under or something it's yeah. like that I don't it was so bad. I, I don't think anyone could have predicted this, like at all. This is not like an anomaly. Michael you Burry did. <laughs> Michael Burry, he did. He actually did as well. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he bought, yeah, he was he was long holding or some shadow. I read an article. In sometime. in hindsight, I yeah, should he have did. held until at least the new consoles came out. But I I wasn't even yeah. sure because of the pandemic, like just how the market was going to be affected by it. I thought GameStop was done for because like how could anyone so, go and <laughs> buy games? But less less. Let's explain what's happened this last week. So, people have probably heard the whole GameStop stock thing, but probably people probably don't get what what was happening. What was happening? So, the 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 stock market Reddit subreddit, Wall Street Boys or something like that. Wall Street like Bets, that. yeah. Yeah, they noticed that a hedge fund manager had bought a whole bunch of stocks or sold a whole bunch of stocks when it was at like nineteen pound. And if you don't get what hedge fund people do, they, they they short sell. So what short selling is, is their client will say they want a stock, right? So this hedge fund manager buys the stock. Now they've got this stock. So if they see the stock go to £15 as compared to 10 they'll sell at 15 So when their client wants the stock back, that hedge fund guy now needs to buy the stock back so if the stock's worth less than they originally got the order for they've made like seven pound if the stock's gone up at 300 percent they've lost 300 percent on one stock so that's what's happened is the that reddit saw that a hedge fund guy i think bought or sold a whole bunch of these stock so what they did they started manipulating the stock and putting loads of orders in for the stock to increase its value and that's what we saw when it became worth from $19 to $350 per <laughs> yeah. stock. Now, that's obscene. I'm pretty sure that's like not natural for like stock growth. It's nearly like 4,000% like growth, isn't it, or something? Yeah. So what, what this has done is basically fuck that stock, that hedge, hedge fund guy over. Because now he's having to buy the stock back at plus 300% to what he sold it as. Mm-hmm. 
So you're seeing how that if if we're talking about thousands of stocks, that's millions, that's billions of money gone, which is great. Let's make this clear. That's fucking really great. We love that because it could it can mess up the stock market, and well, it can, but it's not going to because you can't manipulate the stock market across a whole like a, a stupidly large amount of stocks because then they stop it basically, which is what they've done. We saw all of the the trading apps like put cancelled orders for the stock, so you can actually buy or sell it. I know trading two one two was, which is the one we use. Yeah, yeah. Because like I'm I'm really kind of questionable on this rate because my whole logic behind it is what they've done is they've artificially manipulated the price of a stock to stupidly high levels, and they've done it to a few others as well. There's AMC Entertainment as well. Oh yeah, and all that's done is it's great for the people who have bought the stock low, who saw this coming. The people who are on the Reddit and whatnot who saw this stock, they probably made a good amount of money. That's good. We fucked over a hedge fund guy, but I don't know if you've seen, but there's the whole Twitter thing of Eat the Witch was going mental during this this stock, this craze. And I found that a bit ridiculous. In what sense? Well, people are acting as if this is, as if this is the great Robin Hood moment where oh, you know, right. we're fucking up the witch. We've, uh, they've only confirmed to fuck up one hedge fund guy. It's not the great, it's a great. No, yeah, it's a great thing, but it it's like doesn't... It's the only thing that's happened for a long fucking time where if, you know, it is true that the poor are always going to be fucked by the massively wealthy, then this is the first time in a long time the you know, the, the poor managed to achieve anything but, in that regard. But but this is the thing. The the lowest percentage in terms of wealth didn't benef benefit from this at all because you only have to be privileged to even deal with stocks, you know? So, like, this doesn't help the poor at all. This is like this is my logic of this is it's only made people with money already more money at the expense of maybe a stupidly small amount of the one percent because this isn't going to affect all of the one percent. It's affected like two, two, three hedge fund people who are dealing directly with that stock. Do, do you think it's more sort of symbolic, and that's the reason people are no, yeah, no, up I understand that what it represents. You know, it's like a the. The, the mystery of the moment. stock market yeah it's a reddit fucking moment but it's like it's the mystery moment. of the stock market is kind of stripped back a bit and you can kind yeah. of just see how bullshit the whole thing is and like yeah the free it's, market yeah totally it, it like the stock market doesn't make any sense i was talking to jim about this the other day like you know when you buy a stock you're paying 20 pound for this stock you're selling it to 60 where's that extra 40 dollars coming from or pounds where who's whose pocket is that coming out of like how does it even fucking work because, like, when with this, the economy is based off, if you have an item, you need a buyer, and then you sell your item to the buyer at money. You, there's no um, buyer of stocks. Who the fuck you, you, you is buying your stock? Oh, you, you sell it back to the market at the, the value that the market has organically dictated it is worth. <laughs> but but that, please, that makes no sense. Don't explain it. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. It, it definitely yeah, just doesn't make any sense. Anyway. <laughs> Like, I don't want people to think like I'm I'm against this whole thing. I love it. I love any rich person getting what they deserve, but like there's more to be done. Like I want people to take away from this to the fact that in mass you can fucking make do, make yes. any change That's, you want. Yeah. Like if you can fuck up the fucking stock market, fucking protest. And Tom Marx you know, was uh, he was onto something there. I mean he didn't account for Reddit, but he was onto something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like isn't it the the um Equality Act of like the 60s that JFK implemented was directly as a result of protests. Like protests cause will change. People need to know that the, if they band together, you can just change the fucking system, and you can make improvements to society. I don't want people to because I there's probably a bunch of people who've got involved in this only because it's going to benefit themselves because it's the stock market. Mm -hmm. And like I've there's I'm pretty sure there's some genuine stories on the Reddit where they're like people like. I, I, I listen to you guys, I put in this amount and I'm now able to afford like my life saving fucking treatment. Yeah, that, that's are fucking paying great. Off, like, I'm, their student loans and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm so happy for those people because they've made real change to th their own lives through this at the expense of one fucking dickhead fucking hedge fund cunt. <laughs> but it's just I want I want people to know what the yeah, meaning you know, of this we, is. We've, yeah, we've had one we've gotten one little tiny dub there. 
you know, one little tiny dub. I mean, yeah, those people, you know, they're still going to be hugely wealthy and all that. You know, we haven't changed that at all. But, um, I don't know. I'm glad a few individuals, like you say, were able to do something good for their own lives for once. <laughs> it's symbolic for everybody else. It's yeah, good. And it's like, a, it's, that person did. And it's, it's a, a feel-good moment. Else. It's a yeah. feel-good moment to start the year. Mm-hmm. And the way it's a Rick and moment. Up. It's a Rick and Morty moment. There's just more to be done, and I want people to keep that enthusiasm to know that we can progress and we can eat the witch. That's all. That's all I've got to say. But all no, the other thing that's on my mind is Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. Egg this on. I think it gained a lot of mainstream traction when Elon Musk was like yeah. um, tweeted about it. And my question is, why would Elon Musk tweet about it? If he didn't have a lot of stocks in it to gain benefit of, he had how much money do you think he had in GameStop stocks? Shock stocks. He, the richest man, has benefited benefited from it. Yeah, no doubt. But so he's like he's yeah he's like the Reddit king. Everyone on Reddit yeah. loves Elon Musk. So. But, and that's that's where there's this this kind of thing in me where it's just like yeah we've we've we fucked up some rich people, but rich people have also benefited benefit benefited from it. They've gained money from this. Well, so be it. So be it. Yeah, it's, it's just, like, that's just my... not like the cycle where, where like the whatever the one percent is just hoards their their thing until the the people at the bottom just get fed up. Yeah, no, like think think like the the the, the thing everybody loves. Everybody loves about France is the French Revolution because it's literally just like <laughs> that's it. We're gonna fucking it's cut the only thing. It's the only all thing of your heads off about France. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> France. So that does that does happen. Like you can't beat the witch, the the poor forever, because they will just fucking snap and fuck you up. Yeah, and I guess I, this, as you said, the stock market didn't really anticipate for fucking Twitter no. and Reddit, did it? It's nice to see that it like all, all it took was like that for every everyone to band together and like be like, fuck it, we don't matter, let's fuck them up. Mm -hmm. I like that. It was good infusion. But you, you also you can't fear monger people who have like nothing to lose. So all of the like yeah. fear mongering from the people saying, "Oh, the stock market's gonna like fall and shit." Like, so we don't even no have cares. shares. Yeah. we don't have jobs anyway. All <laughs> money. So fuck it. What can you possibly take away from them? It's good, but it's, it's feel good, and I'm I'm glad it happened because people don't get the the actual like the way the economy works. Like the stock market has a role in that. Mm -hmm. So if if the stock market collapsed. There would be like a recession. There would be financial like difficulties, and it's worth remembering that during those things, the people who suffer are never rich people. Mm -hmm. It's always people at the bottom. Just like the the stock market isn't something you should fuck fuck with for for shits and giggles like constantly, because that can fuck shit up. Pretty sick though. Yeah, it'd be funny, mate. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I gotta say on that. How much is Dogecoin worth now? <laughs> uh, there you has been. You know how you buy Dogecoin. <laughs> There's been people like saying that they're going to try and get that up. Dogecoin. Yeah. Dogecoin, Dogecoin specifically. Because didn't didn't Bitcoin like surge recently too? Yeah. It. W I, I think it's time for the meme economy. See, no, I disagree. It. I think Dogecoin is the worst cryptocurrency because it's a meme currency. I, that's the reason I'd never buy any of it. Currency already is meme currency. It's all made up bullshit anyway. It's all just made yeah, up bullshit. Everything's made up bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, have you? Do you get cryptocurrency? I don't actually understand how any cryptocurrency works. Um. Of course I don't. Like, get you just it. get cryptocurrency by like just making your computer do things. You mine it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, how? How does that make sense? I don't know, but maybe obviously, someone can leave a huge comment describing it for us. If you are smart, smarter than me, can you please explain what fucking cryptocurrency is, what Ripple is, and Valelium? It's like crazy Just, volatile. Yeah. See, the person we need to actually talk to about this is 50 Cent. He knows his cryptocurrencies. Yeah, or, uh, or John. John? Yeah. John? Yeah, I remember. Who's John? Oh, I, I didn't want to say his real oh, name. Oh, John. <laughs> John. Yeah, John. Yeah, you know, this. John, our friend oh. John. <laughs> oh, John. No, why yeah, do we call him John? Because he... that's what we're calling him for his uh, anonymity no, and all that. No, but the thing is, the the Jar fans <laughs> in the last episode were like, we know it's Matt. Just call him Matt. 
<laughs> nah, nah, it's John. We li I like the parallel of the biblical name John and John oh, yeah, 117. Yeah, yeah, that, it yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. yeah John. John, aka Matt, he knows what he know. He would know this. <sighs> you just ruined it. I hate Everyone you. knows his Matt. I anyway. That's where I first I heard the you. term "a mining Bitcoin" was from John. <laughs> <laughs> He's John. Oh, well, just a Bitcoin miner. He doesn't matter. He uh, he's gone. He's mined himself to. He's gone too deep. He's mined too deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't bring a map. Right. Anyone else have any topics before we go into? Yeah, break? I have a topic. I have a topic. No, you don't, because I want to go to the toilet. So no more topics. Um, I just got a quick one to throw out, just to say. I know. I want to talk about this. What? I want to talk about Fallout the Frontier. <laughs> Can I throw my thing out first? It's genuinely yeah, no, like, it's really shit. short. Even go to the pissy. I'm fucking just going to the toilet. Yeah, fuck go go and shoot some out in a minute. So uh, I, I mentioned last episode, uh, my golden retriever Paisley had her uh, her spay, had a noonie. her bitch spay. Um, so she's been recovering from that. Um, so I've been alternating between putting this nappy thing on her, her leotard, and. Uh, okay. <laughs> and like this blow up ring thing um but basically Didn't... last last episode i said like she pissed through the <laughs> she, she pissed through a leotard yeah she pissed straight through the leotard because i kept forgetting to take it off and it happened again <laughs> she pissed through it again so i forgot <laughs> to take it off <laughs> so she had to have the ring but you know what she's all healed up now so she doesn't need anything around her so so That's good that to hear. There. She's she's making a good recovery. But dogs are so stupid, man. One day after her operation, stomach like yeah. staples in it, like bright red, fresh, fresh op. She's like she wants to be jumping up on the sofa, like hurling, like like jumping, <laughs> like a horse jumping over a jump, like you know, proper like athletic shit. Doing that stuff, trying to go upstairs, trying to. Run around, just so stupid. Just, just no concept that they're kind of fucked up a little bit, so they need to rest. No, it, uh, it's equivalent to um, a human being abducted by an alien, <laughs> just like being put to sleep, and then you wake up. I, yeah, I would go blame straight back to running around and jumping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But, <laughs> you know, they just can't comprehend what the fuck. Has happened. To yeah, them. they live in the moment. They don't. They don't. They don't linger. She's probably just as happy, like tearing. Her if stomach anything, out. happier. Because have we ever talked about when Flossie got her? Um, when she was spayed. Oh, don't remind me. She fucking licked open her own stomach hole. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> that is retarded. I, d I don't know yeah, how they... it happened because either um, they offered something to our parents because we were only kids at the time. Like the vets offered some solution, like a, a cone. But no, they... the, the vet said, um, "Just put a t-shirt on her; it'll be fine." A t-shirt. So we... Yeah, a t-shirt. Fuck. So we put a t-shirt on her, and obviously she just moved the bit of the t-shirt that covered her stomach, and then she licked it open. It's because it's dogs have that like instinct thing where like their saliva has like healing properties. So if they cover their own sh their own like body with their saliva, it helps heal it. So they just think I'm gonna lick this this fucking gash in my stomach. <laughs> yeah, they overdo but it. Obviously, lick out all the uh... the fuck's the word? You know the string they tie it all together with. <laughs> What? Does, do, do, do they like not stitches. realize? <laughs> stitching. Yeah, stitches. Right. Fuck. Do they not like? They tie it together with like a meat <laughs> joint. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Fuck. Do do they not like get pain from it? Do they not know that? Oops! I've just fucking cut like open my my womb. Well, womb I suppose womb she would again. have been like pumped full of anesthetic and then on painkillers for like four days. So she, she did seem a bit out of it. To be fair. <laughs> Out of it, but still not out of it enough to open up her own tummy. Yeah, I, I kept joking that she was stuck in her uh, catamin hole, which all the catamin <laughs> fans out there will understand. She's a cutie, though. She was the cutest dog. Was? was. What, is she not anymore now that she doesn't have a womb? <laughs> Jesus. No, no, she, no, Flossie's not <laughs> with us, okay? Oh, Flossie. Yeah, I'm not on about Paisley. 
No. Oh, you totally threw me there. We, which dog are we? I came back in the middle of it. We are talking about Flossie, right? I think Alex was talking about Paisley and James was talking about Flossie. Yeah, yeah, so we were just talking about different dogs confusing. at different times. But I have a core cool memory well, of when Floss licked that wound open because, like, I was like a kid and, like, so could see inside her guts and shit. It was like, yeah, she it, it die? really freaked me out. Yeah, I was Great. for that drive home, I thought, this is it. She's done for. Yeah. But I guess they just sewed it up and it healed. <laughs> Didn't. Did she got, she got like a cone after, after though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. the cone began, which every dog loves. Ah, oh, well, well, uh, we'll sniff this right after these messages then. Hey, I need to talk about Fallout the Frontier! No, you don't. I do. I need to talk about it. What is it? So, <clears throat> there's been a, a mod for Fallout New Vegas called Fallout the Frontier. And I shit you not, it is the fucking worst thing I've ever fucking seen. So here's why. Here's fucking why. So now you've got Fallout Out New Vegas, right? You've got terrible game, together. great writing, really atmospheric, plays like shit. But you've got the two things. You've got the atmosphere and the writing and the, the RPG elements. So you make a mod for New Vegas. So what you do is you keep the worst things and then you have to make the, the things that are good. And I can say now, that will never end well. Because New Vegas is a shit game. We can all agree that it is fucking shit. So this mod team <laughs> decided to make Fallout the Frontier. And it's like this snowy kind of big exp expansion to Fallout. And I've seen gameplay of this. And imagine if they you cut all of the really shit predictable scenes out of Call of Duty and made them in Fallout New Vegas. The ending of Fallout 4. Imagine that in New Vegas. Imagine Charlie Don't Scherf in New Vegas. You seeing how this fucking shit is starting? Um, I'm going to have to admit that um, when you started talking, um, I like opened Google Chrome and then uh, the tab which had somebody that I used to know cover by your favorite Martian started playing. So it was like blasting <laughs> in my ears. Um, but Fallout <laughs> New Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got lost in the Charlie Don't Surf bit. I was like, what, you mean they tried to make missions as good yes. as like the COD 4 mission? No, is it, there's surf. missions where there's like a verti bird assault and you're in a verti bird. Oh there's goodness. missions where you drive a Sherman. There's you, there's missions where you have to ac execute your allies because the hospitals are full. There's there's a self-insert furry security on who's been making... <laughs> pedophilic animated videos so oh, that's that because i just um, searched it and found this article for like new vegas the frontier mod removed by creators the team pulled the mod after discovering one of its developers posted troubling sexual content i guess that's what you're talking about yeah and just the the premise of a self-insert furry securitron in a fallout game just just sounds off already um then you've got you can have sex with a death claw there's a <laughs> underage Sex slave follower. <laughs> oh my god. There's the one of the subplots is um lizard overlords that you can have sex with. <laughs> um a lot of the dialogue is really like fetishy and hypersexual. And just seeing some of the stuff you know it's like holy fuck. And obviously it's all like voice acted by people. So you think Fallout voice acting ain't that great anyway, this is even worse. But just watch a video of it and just tell, and it's fucking bad. It's so bad. That's all I, I want to say. Like, I appreciate modders and people who, who make huge expansions to games. You know, you've got really great ones like Hunt the Freeman. You know, really <laughs> stuff that changes the game, but... That's not a mod, that's a full fucking... It's a full release, mod. man. It's yeah, a full game. It's a standalone game. Yeah, standalone motherfucker. Full price. Just, just, I would suggest people to just search Fallout the Frontier and just look at how fucking terrible it is. Whatever happened to it's... that mod for like Fallout 4 that was supposed to add New Vegas into it? <laughs> Fallout yeah, I think 4. That's still going. Yeah, Fallout 4 New Vegas. It does look quite promising, but it's like you're remaking Fallout New Vegas in a game that's got less charm. Fallout New Vegas, <laughs> but plays the same. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know if this is just me, but does Fallout when you think of like Mission Maker, like kind of that shit, <laughs> like Fallout Four is just like the most generic, just open world RPG in terms of like character design. It just looks so uncanny valley. Like that's that's my biggest gripe with Fallout Four is it just doesn't look all that nice. Yeah, I wouldn't say uncanny valley though because that implies it looks yeah, it like, too look good, good to be enough. true. Yeah. There's like something wrong. Like you look at Fallout Three and Fallout Four characters, they look shit, but they look shit, and that make it that works. Yeah, it was in not just a case of like it was appropriate in Skyrim and Oblivion, but by the time Four came out, it it wasn't it wasn't quite on par with what was expected. But basically, we're obviously getting a new Fallout made by Obsidian because Microsoft owned Be- Bethesda. I'm just hoping they make. Then they make the next Fallout in Gears of War engine. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> you know, you know, Fallout's like really it's janky. So Gears of War has jank quite. It's quite a janky game in we- like weirdly. Well, you're just heavy. Do you think so? Yeah, you're very I would heavy. Say Gears yeah, actually makes... doesn't have much jank. No, it's got. I, yeah, I definitely wouldn't call I it think, janky. Yeah, I think it's very smooth, but you're just very like chunky and heavy, and everything has weight to it. Grounded That's that feeling. Yeah. Okay, but there's okay, but that then like. Gears is goofy, right? We all know Gears is goofy. Yeah, yeah Gears is goofy. Fallout is supposed to be goofy. So you make Fallout in the Gears engine, and then for like one of your melee upgrades, you can b- b- Bootista bomb people. That would be great. <laughs> like, that that would be Fallout. It's Bootista bombing people. So just make Gears of Fallout. Boom. Great game. Yeah. B- Bootista. Yeah, Bootista. I Bootista think bomb. you've won over most. To be honest, you won me over. Like New Vegas of Bautista bombs, incredible! I want a mod. I'm going to make the mod, and it's going to be better than Fallout the Frontier. That's it. I'm stop talking. I'm talking too much. I'm okay. going to go eat cake. It's time. It's time for the break now, isn't it? Anyway, right? Yeah. Someone say it. It's time for the break now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go on then. Okay. You'll upset the redditors. Somebody that I used to. Know. That's it. You can't just keep liking my favorite Martian. Liking? Yo, how it is, cuz? Draw me to your shirts. Go check them out. Description below. Cheers, bruv. In it. <laughs> sniff this. Sniff this. James, whenever you want to sniff this, just go ahead. Yeah, let me, um. Let me emotionally prepare and meditate ready for this episode. Good afternoon, <laughs> morning, evening, or night. This is the John Major Podcast, and these are our Patreons <laughs> over at Patreon. So this is a big thank you to... <laughs> he, he just did the... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what was this? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. I'll, uh... Jim, it wasn't me. Oh, I, I can't undo it. <laughs> Whoever did it, I guess, has to undo it. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> so, a big thank you to Minga Dinger Wingerton Cumbucket Wolf's police officer having his way with Red Dead Redemption 2, all Arthur pooping scenes. Fancy Nancy, fellow witch weekly better on Instagram for some hot witch pics. <laughs> little, little Ducky, Big Chungus, Freddy Fazbear's con- concubine. For God's <laughs> sake, James, just because we can't physically see you doesn't mean you can't let your dick hang out of your shorts. Mm-hmm. Jurassic Anal the Ferret, Trap Out the Hood But I Stay in the Burbs, The Shite Morrison's in the Weird End of Chippenham, <laughs> Salad 547, I made you a Casper's Kebab, but I. Eated it, aka review tech Dobby's b- bot- b- Bottoms Island. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> me. Guys, this isn't a Patreon name, name. I just wanted to say that Other Joe has an absolutely cracking <laughs> pussy. Anyway, back to the names Adam <laughs> McBride. Don't even say that. <laughs> Krusty Kamikaze. If James is pissedic, who is shitter ass? <laughs> and Poo Erbum. Bloodborne has the best FOM soft soundtrack. Ludwig's theme alone spanks every other game's OST. 
Onion Creature, Harriet Broadley, Walker told me I've AIDS, but not the Texas one. Hey, Vsauce Michael here, where are your mingers? Big Cheezer, Samurai Champler, and Joya. Games stop the witch from controlling the market. The gorillas from Sing get drafted into Gallipoli. <laughs> On ing ing oo oo ay 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 ay. The Doofster, aka K S I L G B T Q. I want to apologize to Patrick Hanley for calling him a minger. Please ex answer my calls. I didn't mean to make you upset. Dobby has zero pounds in his Xbox. Special hurt, shock, shock. Out of the damn way. Review tech, eh, Blackwater. Which four funnies member knows about one of the Jules gamer tag Blackpan94 to play Halo with me? The Bush Bush. KSI. Imported guest, Amy. Boatman. The beast is feeling wild up. <laughs> big, big thanks to Sniff This. <laughs> Sniff This. Sniff This. Fuck you, James. I like bread more than you. The epically jardocious munch fungler. Okay, I liked it. Sniff This. Gilbert the Awesome One. Catheter Bag Capri Sun. Watto knows what the Sniff This. <laughs> Nate's Mini Sniff. What does James look like? He fucks. Sniff this. Squidward tennis balls. Big muscle sniff this. 011 IE2. Mr. Cheesy sniff this. The crunch on its head 1000. <laughs> Boris Johnson versus Margaret sniff this. Dawn of sniff this. Come for James and sniff this. The ultimate Max Rebo sniff this. Okay, typical golden sniff this enjoyer. Big sniff this episode sniff this. A new douche. Cobalt sniff this. <laughs> Tony Shaloub's little bitch sniff this. That nest of sniff this. There's people in my sniffness. <laughs> Drain, <laughs> sniff this Johnson. Chaser to sniffness. <laughs> Can't even say it anymore. My ancestors are smiling at me, review tech sniff this. Can you say the same? Former UFC's strawweight champion, sniff this. 21 Grammys, superstar Frammies, we the new Jacksons, I'm all about that sniff this. Blade Runner, sniff this. Using my child's make a wish foundation wish to finally check out Nate's minifigs on sniff this. Sniff this. <laughs> James re- James read catheter as cath eater and should be sniffed. We did it, James. You've been cast in Spider-Man 3. Joseph Jewish sniffed this. I didn't get a kiss on the last shout-out. I'm no longer a beast believer. From now on, you're just Jim. Sniff this. <laughs> you gonna pay them back, Jim, or are you just gonna sniff this? <laughs> Doug Walker holding James's hand softly while teaching him how to sniff this. <laughs> Do you fart so hard your balls explode? Grubhub perks give you the deals on the food you love, the kind of deals that make you sniff this. <laughs> sniff this. Tom Fudging Armstrong. Welcome to the sniff this revolution. The Christian sniff this status quo has gone too far. Hi honey, I'm home from the sniff this. Cosmic sniff this. Chairman of the People's Republic of England, James House. Enormous thank yous to Nate's minifigs. I'm going to get a detailed back, ta back piece tattoo of Argy and you can't stop me. Aaron Kavanagh. Bracket, Jim pronounces my surname correctly. James, still love you though. I can't be bothered to change my name each week. So, oh, fuck. Gunge my clunge. T Noble Doble. Michael Mann 2000. Steven is human. Connor Tada. Butter me up some porn on the cob. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Harbor. Your favorite Josh and Smash or Passes animation TV show mount. <laughs> Katia fucking Manigan. James the Peg Lord. Luca Guadagnino's. Suspiria is far more superior than Dario Argento's version. Yeah, I said it. Fight me. God, those fucking names are impossible. Thomas Martin, Evan Pierce. It's like my great great Bebo used to say. Used to say, one in the pink and one in the stink. Quahog Police Department supports gamers. Quebec Films. Chris Warren. Everyone eats ants and worms. <laughs> <laughs> Aura. Cool dip chip. Keck Flexington, Numa Numa Banana, Ben, Fartbag, George Kenwood Parker, Fane Doll, Fiddle aka The Cream Dimension, Dream Awful 2142, The Gorillas from Sing on holiday to Swindon, Retro Raggy, Raimi is going Reest of Roy, Fiona Gorman, Melvin Melvin, Brother of the Joker, Tomcat, King Kong Fan 3, David Wallace, My name is Max, My world is fire and blood, Once I was a cop, a, a road warrior searching for a righteous cause. Is this the blood, the blood cock of the dark soul? William Knowles. 
Thank you, Acolyte. Your local Jehovah's Witness listener. James, please return my body pillows, I'm begging you. Gabriel Ledge. Danny G, based lord. Review Tech Grips Dibby Dosa. Edgy Erica. Jamie and Alex Belt Men. So I'm just the Mario Judah to your Princess Beach. Check out <laughs> Nate's minifigs on Instagram. Dwayne, Dwayne the, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Rock Johnson the Rock, Dwayne the, Dwayne the, Dwayne Rock Johnson, Rock Johnson. Ferdia Playman, Sam Buckley, aka No, the Tiny Rick Follower, Snake, what happened? <laughs> Snake, <laughs> answer me, Snake, Snake, Sam. James, you evil cunt, stop tormenting the poor McDonald's employees of your fucking Big Macs and just take the pixel, pixels, pickles or whatever. I challenge you to League of Legends top lane. If you use Aatrox, you're a pussy. Adam Johnston, Tom Buis, Juan Hernandez, Jam. The only thing that can stop a fully powered up nostalgia critic is David Wallace. Joel Stewart, Logie Bear, James's Jizzer Jick, Connie Reed, Jake White. Big Whoops, Gremblo, Spock, The Rock, Doc Ock, and Hulk Hogan. Big Cheese, <laughs> Kuta Panda, 1110000, open bracket, P, close bracket, Canada Stone, Lucy Tai is an Asian anal queen, local units, all units, Randy ruins the Patreon, Alex and Jim need to finish Blood One. Hip. Bump. E. Oh. <laughs> what? Incomplete. It's incomplete. I can't finish it. Did you hear James though? Yeah, what did he do? I don't know. Well, <laughs> oh and this, well this one requests me to say, and that's it for names. All right, time for the Reddit section. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Katia fucking Manigan, David Wallace, there. What? What? Ah! Think about it. Think about it. All Funny. I'm saying is Jamie is quiet. Well, if Jim's being quiet, he can introduce part two then. Yeah, Jamie introduced part two. Uh, three, two, one, let's go. Dunno, Welcome dunno. to the... Uh... Shut the fuck up! Oh, sorry. Be quiet! I'm doing <laughs> okay, it, no, no, okay? I will, I will, I get it. Stop! Stop now! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. James, you do it. <laughs> Good afternoon. Be quiet. I'm trying to do it. <laughs> Good afternoon, morning, oh, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Welcome to, to this second episode of, of the Charm <laughs> Media Podcast. This is the second half where we take questions on the Charm Media Reddit. If you have a question, and, please uh, go to Reddit and uh, drop us a comment, and we Alex will try to answer it in this section of the show. Now, Alex, take it away. Take us away, Alex. Uh. Yeah, um, yeah, head over to reddit.com forward slash FNAF if you want to leave more questions for us. Like <laughs> Alistair underscore 13 did. I'm just going to start us off for this episode. Which jar members are your favorite Martian characters? Um, I'll tell you guys the, the names. Uh, Ray William Johnson plays Puff Puff. That's his character's name. Um... <laughs> The fuck is Puff Puff? Who's Puff Puff? Who here's Puff Puff? Someone uh, has to claim James. it. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's Puff Puff. No, James is Puff Puff. Jamie's Puff Puff. I'm Who didn't tell James <laughs> Puff Puff? Or, yeah, no, James, I, you're, you're Puff Puff. I think simply no, for Jamie's the name, Puff just Puff. so we can add Puff no, Puff to the no, Jamie ones. does Puff Puff. I don't Puff Puff. No, you're Puff Puff. But no, Jim, Jim, could be, Jim could be Axel. There's a there's Axel Benatar, DJ and Puff Puff. Um, you're DJ Alex. I'm fine with that. Apart from the, fuck, maybe I'm not fine with that. The one song he did was like the one that <laughs> <laughs> it's been like removed. Yeah. In fact, I I thought um he'd removed that one from YouTube, but I looked at his channel earlier and it's still on there. So. Well, it should be fucking removed. I guess that makes Ruben Benatar. Yeah, the guitar playing guy. Yeah, yeah, which makes you Axel. Ruben. Yeah, that works. That works. If Ruben was a, was to play an instrument, I feel like it would be a guitar. So. Hmm. Okay. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have an opinion. Uh, before we it. move on, actually, I just want to add Puff Puff to James's nicknames. Um, because I just think that's fucked up that he's called that. Puff. 
puff, puff. Our next question comes in from the the Devilan. Wondering if any of the cast has watched the BBC show Life on Mars from 2006. If, if, if so, what were your thoughts? On a more broader note, what do you think of BBC shows in general, such as Doctor Who, Merlin, Luther, etc.? Any favourites? And what do you think about the BBC as a whole outside of the shows they've created? All right. So I've I've not uh, watched Life on Mars. I hear it's pretty based. However, the BBC as a whole cringe. No, right? Merlin, it's though. cringe. Merlin's cringe. Doctor Who's cringe. <laughs> Luther. Luther, in retrospect, very cringe. Sherlock. Sherlock like, cringe. Like, ultimate cringe. Oh, it's... Sherlock is actually kind of good, though. Uh, no, no was... don't use the word good. Cringe and based are our two adjectives here. I will not accept any others. All right, cringe, base. Let's go. BBC. I, uh... Base, base, cringe. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, Sher <laughs> Sherlock especially is one that's like, oh my god. Because a few months ago, I rewatched the Robert Downey movies, and they were like, fine. Yeah, and then great. I was like, I, like I, was, I was trying to remember like, so how did they kind of visualize Sherlock Holmes in the BBC show? And I went and like looked up some clips, and it genuinely is like cringe. Like there's Robert this... Downey based Junior versus <laughs> cringe. In, in season one of Sherlock, <laughs> there's this, there's this oh, sequence oh, where cringe. Sherlock has to do his like mind palace bullshits, and the way they present it. <laughs> I know it, the scene. I know. The yeah, scene with like the text about. on the screen and stuff. I thought <laughs> yeah, when I found it on YouTube, I thought it was like a, a fake like fan edit thing for like a joke. I didn't realize it's it was the actual real. show. <laughs> so a uh, big no to to Sherlock, especially by the time. I started twigging onto it, I think, when those last seasons were coming out, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on in this show anymore? What is... It, it like, carried it because of the, the cast members and how, like, just famous they are, I guess, of Benedict and the other guy. Well, it made Benedict famous, didn't it? It was, like, it probably his... helped propel him, yeah. Yeah. It made him a good actor. Yeah, but when I think of, like, BBC, the best thing, like, the best show to come out of BBC is, like, uh, Planet Earth or something like that. Those nature documentaries with the Hans Zimmer what? music. Those are the best yeah. things they probably have made. We'll see about that, I suppose. Well, let's actually get back to the actual subject of this convers conversation. Yes, I've seen Life Which is Marvel the best fizzy drinks, okay? <laughs> Which are the best ones... And the I've worst seen. One. I'm gonna have to put Oasis at number one. I've actually <laughs> seen Life on Mars twist. and Ashes to Ashes, and I will say that the Ashes Ashes to Ashes is better. Oh, okay, okay. Because it has an it has an Audi Quattro, and not a Ford Cortina 2008. Uh, not oh. a good reason. Not a good no, reason. Ashes to we Ashes never is ask. very good. Oh, yeah, we shouldn't let James do his opinions. I've actually this. seen them. Oh, I'm a big fan of David Bowie, but I haven't seen these two shows. That He's have just named after the songs. Then. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. 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 Well, David Bowie wrote them. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> did David, with the term "ashes to ashes," is that like a term that David Bowie invented? Yes. I, don't, I don't think so. Ashes to so. ashes. Uh, <laughs> Audi Quattro to Audi Quattro. Mm. Um, Peaky now, Blinders is BBC. Shit. You guys like that, don't you? I've seen like a couple no, of seasons. It falls it. off after uh, the season what? where the Italian Mafia come in is where that falls off. I've not watched it at all. Um, uh, season okay. one and two. Yeah, again, it feels like another show that's just sort of carried by a good actor. Yeah. yeah to, to me, it, it's. I don't want to watch it because I look at it and I actually think, yeah, the people who like this quite cringe. Makes me think it's yeah. quite cringe. The reasons they're saying it's good, so not based. Cringe. Yeah, peaky it's like cringes. Destiny too. <laughs> the episodes of Inside Number Nine that I've seen, only a couple, but that, that's actually very good from what I've seen. Oh wait, hang on. Sick of it. That was them. When it was good, when the, that was a while ago, though. Yeah, that would that would have been a while ago, but that is a really fucking good one. That's very Thick very it. based. What's the movie called too? In the loop. In the loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are great. And there's also a weird like crossover because um, I'm like looking at a list and like Fleabag is in there, and that's supposed to be really good. So there is stuff you can like find that is good, um, but largely the most the most well-known popular stuff seems to be kind of pooey. Uh, Devs was good too, actually. That came out in 2020. That was kind of awesome. What? Uh, the show Devs. Oh, so you're doing a joke. No, no, I'm serious. It's really good. Oh, no, Devs. I was, I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of something else. Oh, some cringe, yeah. I, th I feel like There's I've seen Channel that Channel 4 before. gamer sitcom or something. <laughs> I thought that was Called it. Devs. Let me find it. <laughs> no, I don't know what it's called, but... 
I just thought that was it in my head. I was like, that's probably what that I will give you called. it a sound like one of those, but it's the Alex Garland, the Annihilation guy. It's like his show. Dead Pixels. That's the channel for gaming sitcoms. Oh, with yeah. Dead Pixels. <laughs> Not based. Very cringe, I'm sure. I feel like we've talked about Doctor Who before. I have fond childhood memories of the Tenant like run, but outside of it, yeah, I really yeah, can't. Yeah. I can't. Oh. And uh, yeah, I don't know about Luther, how I'd feel about that now. I don't think I ever saw season three. I, I liked season I one from memory, um, but kind of fell off in two. And <laughs> and if you're falling off when it's like three episode seasons, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It was but, just carried by like, I'm guy and I'm cool. I wear long coat. That was that was sort of like the whole. That's every BBC that's show. Just British I'm TV. Cool guy, I wear long coat, and everyone's like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, it just kind of carried it." British tele. Okay, well, let's talk about drinks then. We already have. Please refer to episode seventy-six, uh, one hundred and five. Oh, episode twelve as well. To see our <laughs> opinions on drinks. Well, there is one for you here, though, Ruben. Uh, from Skinnel the Twelve. Question for Ruben: I'm currently studying music production at uni, and I'm due to start my dissertation in a few months. Do you have any general advice in terms of the dissertation itself, how you approached it, anything to make it less stressful, etc.? Cheers. Um, I'm trying to think. I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to write my dissertation on from the start of second year, uh, and then as time went on, I every now and then between you know the start of second year and the start of third year third year when i actually started my dissertation i just note the odd thing down you know and i didn't use all of it but i'd noted the odd thing down uh obviously wait did they say if they were they, they were starting it like it's already i'm starting. currently not... studying music production at uni so yeah okay so i guess you know yeah you may yeah if you're obviously already in your third year then what i'm saying there means fuck all to you um so just build a time machine or something first and then go back and sort that one out. That's a pretty good dissertation subject, <laughs> actually. Um, trying to think. So I, I think the process started before Christmas, and my dissertation was due originally in March, but that got pushed back to April because of COVID. Um, so the bulk of my writing took place probably over around two and a half weeks. Um, I, I I wrote one sort of quite shit rough chapter, and my dissertation supervisor, who I'm my friends with, he, he looked at it, and you know I knew it was kind of dog shit, but it was just to get a shape of where I was going with things. So it's all right to write like complete bollocks for the first, like yeah, like like I wouldn't say do a whole fucking draft of your dissertation and then have that be looked at. Do a first chapter, which will be like I don't know two to three thousand words, depending on how many chapters you do. Um, I did three. Um, it's all right for it to be complete shit at first, as long as you're and and yeah, as long as you're involved with your um, dissertation supervisor or somebody, you know, as long as you're somebody who is involved in this process with you, um, who will who will sort of moderate your work for you and and and, and edit it and tell you what you need to change. Um, I did a load of fucking research. I, I yeah, I had a huge uh, bibliography. Do um, your bibliography as you go, I think. Don't, don't leave that to the end. That's just one thing. Um, definitely do it as you go, actually. Um, just have a st- <laughs> have a strong idea. Don't just force something. To, you know, don't just force yourself to write ten thousand words on something that you don't really care about at all. Because I wrote mine about the relationship between video games and capitalism, for example, and I'm doing a fucking film course. I, I, oh, I did a film course. And my dissertation was nothing to do with that. So, <laughs> you know, you can kind of do whatever you want, really, as long as your supervisor approves it. Um, I don't really know what else there is to say. Just, yeah, I did most of my writing in the space of about three and a half weeks. So, but I had it thoroughly planned prior to that. So don't, yeah. It was also the best thing I did in my whole degree. It's the, I, the thing I enjoyed most was writing my dissertation. So yeah. it, it shouldn't be a, fo- a formidable sort of task. It's something that you should try to enjoy. There you go. I'm done now. Uh, the the bra button has one. 
Thoughts on Kevin Hart in the upcoming Borderlands movie? While it's going to suck, the concept of it is hilarious to me. Who's yeah. the cast so far? Who was? Who was? It was a very, very well-known Isn't female Kate actress. Blanchett? Female actress, uh, an actress. Yeah. I thought um, she was scrapped actor. from it. Oh, did she leave it? Like, Kate Blanchett, yeah, Kevin Hart, Elo, Elo Roth. So. That's right. E and Elo, Elo Roth directed Kevin Hart and Kate Blanchett starring Borderlands movie. She's still apparently in. Yeah, Damn. she's still apparently in it as Lilith. Cringe, not based. Written by Aaron Berg and Craig Mazin, who... Okay. Chernobyl is there. What will they do with the style? However, oh, will they... mm, writer of Identity Thief, The Hangover, <laughs> The Huntsman. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, superhero movie, Scary Movie 4, Scary Movie 3. <laughs> um... I'd, out of ev I think out of every video game ever made, every property, every valuable franchise that is out there that deserves a movie, um, Borderlands is so low on that list for me. <laughs> like, I, I sometimes, I'd, like, I'd do you one further and say it's the least deserving out of every single <laughs> um, IP yeah. that exists? It, it genuinely, sometimes I just get angry at the concept of Borderlands just out of nowhere. Like, I, I remember that it exists and I remember the humor and I just get so annoyed at how just unfunny it is. But imagine it in a movie. It's the one thing Borderlands is like is really fucking bad at. The story and the humor and everything. That's uh, going to be the, the focus scenes. of it. Cutscenes in Borderlands 3 just drove me fucking insane. Yeah, I played it muted for the time I did. Um, it's just... <laughs> just awful yeah it's too far it's so fucking cringy um it doesn't deserve a movie and um, i'm sure it's going to be utter trash but the fact is kevin hart is good news um that means it's going to be a fucking um, huge yeah. box office hopefully success. they get um let's look at the borderlands one characters a sec who's going to play who's going to voice claptrap uh it will be it will be the, the cool guy game. who voiced um oh what's his name Patton oswalt be Patton oswalt or Ryan Reynolds? Kevin Spacey. Is it Patton That is his name, right? I'm just made Patton that Patton Oswalt, yeah. Yeah, Ratatouille. Rat Ratatouille. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds would be a good pick. I could actually yeah. imagine Ryan Reynolds doing it. Yeah. Or Vin Diesel could He's do it. He's gonna play Brick. Oh, they got, they got Batista for Brick. Easy. Easy. There you go. He's in. Um, and then finally you got the Mordecai. Who's gonna play Mordecai? Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> but this is directed by Eli Roth, which is so fucking weird. He did like I thought he did like fucked up movies. Yeah, he did the hostel one and two. Yeah, it's gonna be fucked up then. It's gonna be a fucked up movie. Maybe no, he really no. likes Borderlands or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last movie he did was um The House with a Clock in Its Walls with Jack Black, and it's like a kids movie. So he must be well connected to just <laughs> jump. Is he, is he, to... uh, branching out, he wants to do some other things. Yeah, he's clearly got his in. Um, and the movie did, like made loads of money, even though that like pure January bullshit. But I was actually I I have a newfound uh, disrespect for Kevin Hart because um, of something I found really, on Netflix. He's a really like piece of shit guy. Yeah, yeah I didn't <laughs> realize. Like I I knew kind of top level about the controversies he'd been in, where he's like cheating on his wife and. Um, oh, he's a, he's real trash. Dude. And the, the way he handled uh, addressing some of his weird fucking old jokes. Um, it's like really strange and there's this oh my god this fucking obnoxious netflix documentary series it's like a six episode series called kevin hart don't fuck this up i skipped through a few episodes of it one of the episodes is completely about like his side of uh the how how it went down with cheating on his wife and everything Ugh. and it's it is the most most like a jerk off self aggrandizing bullshit of like his wife saying that sitting there like yeah um well you know what they say um everyone has t at least two chances because three strikes and you're out and all this kind of weird shit and it it, it, it will make you dislike him even more if, you, if you're not a fan of him and he had <laughs> every other sentence in the documentary is like this weird like motivational shit he's always talking about if you've listened to the joe rogan with him you'll know what i'm on about where 
Like he doesn't say anything. He just he just keeps spouting off this random motivational speech shit. But just be positive all the time. Be positive. Work harder. Platitudes. Never stop. Yeah, platitudes where he's just it, it just sounds like bullshit just to distract from <laughs> from I guess you know his shit. Yeah, I I I, I guess that's a, a backhanded recommendation for that on Netflix. That I just happened to check out. Glitch time fail has one. Hey Jar, how have you guys been feeling this lockdown? Have you been able to stay productive? Also, what personal lessons do you feel you have learned due to the circumstances? Personally, I've learned I have tremendous guilt over not being productive, so I've learned to stop judging myself when I'm in phases of feeling inactive and just wanting to play video games. Peace. He should give me advice, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about this I, third I, one, man, I, but this one's really not doing yeah, it for me. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, I've, learned, this one's awful. I've got an extremely unhealthy relationship with food is something Yeah, I've I wonder yeah. why. I just want I just want salt all the time at the moment. Yeah, salt salt is better than sugar, man. I fucking love salt. Yeah, fuck sugar. Salt's where it's at. I wish yeah, I could be salt based like, sugar such cringe. A, I have such a sugar I've had, craving. Um, no, I have I, as well. No, I've had um I've generally had No, um, I have. I've had takeaway at least no, every day this week. <laughs> I've had it, you haven't. <laughs> and Jamie has as well. Jamie's as dirty as I am. I've had <laughs> quite a few meal deals. My hands are clean. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, no, uh, meal deals are rip-offs. Yeah, they're right. They're not when you're, eating, you're buying them every day. They, that adds up. Yeah, they're right. Yeah, they're fine. Be quiet. <laughs> no. Hush up, no. Hush up, boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's go on the get back to the question a <laughs> bit. I don't know about you guys, but in lockdown one, it had the unique kind of unknown fear factor, right? So th that was when I was like no, stress eating. That... What? What do you mean no? Um, no, th that's when it was the most fun. It was like yeah, I had all this damn. stuff to do. I was like yeah, I could do stuff, I could play stuff, yeah. play this game, and it was crisis it was two, like just three, going fun. into yeah. summer, beautiful weather all the time, like sitting outside, being like man. This could stick around for a while. Just kick my yeah, feet up and uh, watch all the and movies shit. and <laughs> was that play like, all the games. Like, I suppose what I'm backlog. forgetting is just how long that first lockdown was, too. Yeah, fuck. So it's, it's basically like three in and of itself. But uh, uh, okay, at least for the first half of that first lockdown, more fearful for me anyway. It was just yeah, like, what, the, yeah, what is yeah, even yeah. happening? Oh, I, I can't believe this is going on. Um, and it was just eating like trash, just fucking. Just I awful. my dissertation through uh, like a little bit of it, so I, I still had stuff to do. Now I don't. <laughs> yeah, then move on to the second lock lockdown, not lockdown, which like I uh, which yeah, only lasted four weeks. Yeah, yeah. that one I I I think I was already like back into a routine by then, so I I don't even really remember that one as well, much. They, um, I think I was still able to go to the gym then as well, so I didn't. Care yeah, you could much. get your hair cut. You could fucking do basically anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, basically it wasn't even a lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the current one, I don't know, it just... There, there's something mentally about about being, like, flung back a, an entire year and just the deja vu mm. shit. Like, it, it does feel really, really fucking hopeless at the moment. But, you know, I'm just waiting for it for it to, like, end so I can try and get back into some sort of routine because it's just all fucking all over yeah. the place. I was actually, um, I was at work, and everything's been feeling particularly meaningless uh, lately. And I was putting stuff on the shelves, and when I stood back up, I like hung there over this this trolley thing I had with me with stuff on it, and I was just like, I kind of want to just cry and never stop. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate this. <laughs> just, yeah, it would be okay, but I don't. We don't. There's nothing. I there's no, there are no dimensions to anyone's lives. We don't get to do anything mm -hmm. like, ever. And it, now it's like the build up of it too. We're like, <laughs> I could almost can't remember. Well. I'm bitter. Yeah. yeah, there is a lot yeah. of like apathy, bitterness, frustration, and yeah, it, it is getting to that well, breaking hatred, point. Hatred, actually. Yeah. Sheer hatred for this country. <laughs> I know, like, you, you just can't forget this shit. <laughs> can't forget how it's been handled. It's so disappointing, but. Have you, have you seen these statistics for Japan versus England? Yeah. Because Japan is, they're more, there's there's like triple the amount of people in Japan and they're a lot like more yeah, dense. Denser population and like a fraction of the fatalities and Yeah, cases. like they've got like 5,000 deaths or some shit, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, we've got 100,000. Trying to look it up while you talk. Yeah, like yeah, it's got actually five and a half thousand deaths. It's actually a fucking and, joke. And they're way closer to China, obviously. Like, I'm fucking. Look at this. What are uh, our cases? What, what's that word? <laughs> so we have ground zero. They have five and a half thousand deaths and three hundred eighty-seven thousand cases, and then the UK has. Oh yeah, ten times their over ten times their cases, but twenty times their deaths. Oh How's that God. worked out? Yeah, it just it just goes to show that um, it's one hundred percent the government's fault. Yeah, yeah, but they just they're just really good at dividing everybody. They're really yeah. good at yeah. and everyone's so like eager to shit on each other for it. Mm -hmm. Remember it's that, because... Comrade James. Don't let the let them pit the proletariat against each other. Let them, James. Fuck you! <laughs> I'm taking the fucking gherkins out of my fucking big mate. Do it you. yourself and bin them. Do it your fucking self. Well, you don't save no, any money on it. You don't I save any money on it. the gherkins. Don't you don't do save any. Me. You don't save any money on the gherkins. They're not, they're not. They're, well, think about the fraction that they are receiving oh, no, from I, McDonald's no, total no, profits. No, no, I make the the product more expensive for them because it costs. It means they have to put more labour into the burger. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> you're letting the, you're dividing you're dividing the proletariat. Oh, the proletariat! Believe. I'm bougie. You are the proletariat. I'm no, I'm I'm bourgeoisie. <laughs> I'm fucking the problem. Okay. I'm... James is Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, boy. <laughs> fuck, fuck the UK government, man. They get fucking. He gets fucking COVID and he gets first class treatment while we all die. Fuck him. Fuck the Tories. They can all go to fucking hell. Um, did Boris Johnson actually have COVID? No, yes. I don't think I don't think he did. I think he was just hiding. Uh, yeah, I think he didn't, and it was all just like a, a political play to like just get take the pressure off of. Uh, oh him yeah, garner a bit of sympathy for, bit. for him too. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he had COVID. Because like Donald well, Trump definitely didn't have COVID either. Regeneron. Uh, no, he did. I don't know. He if did he... it as an excuse to take crack as a <laughs> as medication. Anyway, mm. um, so I'm thinking Apple Tango might be one of my favorite. Yeah, I'm thinking Spence. Oasis, maybe top ten, top five. No, I'm thinking Bobbin. Yeah, I think, I think Dr Pepper. I think yeah. Dr Pepper is one of the worst yeah. drinks. So I think Dr Pepper is very. Well, let's very just low. say John liked sort of Dr like, Pepper. John loved Dr Pepper. Well, I think Dr Pepper is sort of like drinking like sand. Like there's nothing like mm, refreshing. You, know, you drink Dr Pepper, you're like wow, what a refreshing drink. It's like I could have just drank like sand or something like that. I've never bought it. What is even the flavor? Is that like shit. Like bubble gum sort of flavor shit. It's oh. awful. It's fucking awful. I know. I just said. I terrible. thought it was pepper. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It's it's the flavor that you see the from bubblegum gum flavor stuff. And um, uh, what's the other one? And like rum and raisin ice cream tastes the same as it as well. They all just have this weird universal like fuck knows what it is flavor. Well, no, it's like a caramel drink. Yeah, it has caramel. We've definitely had this conversation because I've definitely we've definitely all googled it while we've been sat here. So we've definitely done this before on probably every episode for the last like year. Oh my god, the thing I've got on this can is so misunderstood since not eighteen eighty five. I looked Why up what you um, no, you're just I looked up the soda that, that that America drinks the most, and it was it. It's Mountain Dew. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Game I'm gonna rise. say Mountain Dew is not that good. <laughs> Mountain Dew is fucking sick. What are we talking about? No, but when does milk Dew... come on in the scale? Dude? <laughs> Just no, man. Milk. milk is no you milk is terrible. Milk. Well, Carbonized it's milk. Not terrible. Like I, uh, uh, people that say you can't just drink milk on its own, and, and they act like you're like gross um, for doing it. You're drinking. You're drinking the titty juice of another animal. I don't give a fuck. I, I'll drink anything that's called milk. I don't care what it is. Oat milk. Pigeon no, milk? milk, coconut milk, milk milk, um, you got so soya milk, it makes... soy milk, chocolate milk, duck milk, all the milks. It's more. It makes more sense for us humans to drink titty milk. Why haven't we right. normalized drinking titty milk? Because at least I'm it's our you, own man. thing. Well, there's like... that weird thing, and I think, wait, there's... Oh, what is it? Where? Nah, maybe this is. This is I think this is a joke in a South Park thing, or I just associate it with it, but. But just women being milked. Or well, maybe that was just like that. Maybe it was just a weird thing, James. Said. Yeah. Like an it's it Mad Max, your imagination. Yeah, yeah it's it's Mad Max, they get milked. Oh, yeah, they the, get the, milked. 
<laughs> Mad Max is to clean his head with milk in a certain scene. <laughs> no, it was definitely something that was in our in our old in like an old group chat where it was just a video of like anime cowgirls being milked. It was on, <laughs> it was on YouTube, oh, yeah. so it was like clearly not like it was you know it was on Wait, YouTube. What cowgirls? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a James sort yeah, of. No, okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah, it was you. It was you. No, no, what? Me, what? Why the fuck would we have found it? Yeah, like, that reminds me of that weird <laughs> shit. I think I think James found too. Where it was like, um, like anime girls, like <laughs> with like bikes inside them and shit. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> oh, like stretching Wait. themselves over the like bikes yeah. and the, the frame yeah. of the bike can oh, be seen. Uh, that was a four time thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is it got like a name? I don't even know how you would find that. No, it so. has a name. I can't remember. James has gone through so many arcs. <laughs> How, and, and, uh, I, it was funny. Alex found it funny. I was only yeah, sharing it for that. It's definitely stayed in my memory. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I could actually no. What? See, I still have that group. I can find all of this information. Oh now, just give me a second. <laughs> I love the fact that our old group chat, the fucking profile pictures, is a zoomed-in picture of my face. <laughs> 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 oh my god, Alex, do you not remember when you used to go on B and post a picture of my dog and put, how cute is my dog? <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no one ever replied. <laughs> <laughs> you had you just like going on B and posting like the most bizarre stuff that even B wouldn't, would not acknowledge. <laughs> Because it wasn't like porn. <laughs> it wasn't like Asian is the master race. <laughs> okay, head. look, the, the conservative government have infected Captain Captain Tom, as he was he became known very colloquially across the country. They've, they've deliberately infected him with COVID nineteen, and he's in hospital. So when he dies, he'll become a martyr for the whole thing. And somehow, despite him getting COVID, likely being a failing of the government, they will get they will generate support from it somehow. Look at this great British martyr who died. We must all band together and fight, fight the COVID. Uh, who's Captain Keys? I don't know, but I think I'm going to punch my hand into his skull and take his fucking chip out. I'm going to break his face open and get the chip. Then you press up on the D-pad. Odie, 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 Odie. All your problems yeah. solved. Liberating Pablo has one for us. Who's going to win? Godzilla or King Kong? King Kong. Zilla. Yeah, I'd prefer Kong. if Godzilla won, but King Kong is going to win. He's the underdog. Is he the underdog? Giant gorilla yeah, versus giant lizard. Giant lizard that can shoot lasers out of its mouth, yeah. and in the film is like twice the size of uh, King Kong. So, have you seen the trailer? I didn't even watch it. I don't. I, I've you know. seen like screenshots. Yeah, you know, I did watch the other day. Well, other day though was the uh, teaser trailer for Godzilla 2014, where they're, they, the all the soldiers do the halo jump, and there's all the red flags. Oh, yeah. It was a very cool teaser trailer. It basically and it made it out like it was going to be this crazy. Yeah, it was going to be this crazy like horror, really intense film, and then it was just kind of like boring and shit. Yeah, with Kickass in there. I remember nothing about that movie, and I've definitely seen it. I've not even seen it. I just I've not it seen it, but I remember loads of it. Let's do this one from Cajolio, penultimate one. So my dad was confirmed to have corona four days ago, and now I'm starting to get a cough. Alex said he was pretty confident he got the virus in 2020, so my question is, can you go into detail about some of the symptoms and maybe some symptoms that aren't talked about as much? that you got. Obviously I can just Google the symptoms, but I'd rather waste some of Alex's precious mortal time. Um, so the main thing for me was, it was like very heady. Like I, I kept describing it as like, I mean now I describe it as brain fog, but back then I'd constantly describe it as like, just feeling like you're tipsy all the time. Or like, you're like disassociating like a little bit, like you're separate from your body or something. It's really fucking weird and horrible. But like, yeah, the the brain thing was a big one. And on, on the, on the, in the middle of the night, um, before I like knew I had it, I, I like was like shivering and like breathing really fucking weird. Like the <laughs> kind of breathing. Um, so that was a big... That seemed like an obvious kind of symptom of it, but I think part of what makes it so tough is that there are so many fucking symptoms, <laughs> and you can you can well, carry it without having any. So I mean, 
I don't even know how me describing the, the, it the, so the much. The brain fog thing, I mean, I was just saying that, is that not something that could just be a symptom of just being really fucking ill anyway? Yeah. If you're really, really unwell and your body is combating something that's quite severe, or, yeah. I don't know, let's say you were just having a course of chemotherapy. Like, yeah, yeah, you're that's what the theory is with, well. um, yeah. with the brain fog thing, where a lot of people... I just, um... I just was thinking that I wouldn't want someone to panic and think, I'm getting this really hyper unique thing. Oh my God, I'm never going to think straight again. Oh, that's it. It's over. No. I'm never going to concentrate. Yeah, but I mean, if, if it is that like... That was what it was like last year. It was like, shit, I get mm -hmm. COVID. I'm not going to think. It's over. Yeah. I can't do anything. Yeah. Well, if you are stressing, your out, stressing yourself out to that level, you can just get like a test, I guess, if you want to know for sure. But when I had it, there was like, there was no way to get a test unless I wanted to pay hundreds of pounds on some weird bespoke website that was selling them yeah i don't know good luck with it either way um <laughs> use the nhs site and everything because there's all sorts of fucking weird um symptoms you can get that people don't talk about um i'm pretty sure your dick gets smaller as well it's crazy your dick gets smaller gets but your balls get way bigger <laughs> way bigger <laughs> i'm still getting used to that uh paul specter has got our final question Hey boys, the undisputed only Latvian jowling here. I'd like to know if any of you have gone through a period where you didn't seem to want to play video games. I got through a period like that recently myself and have been slowly getting into some games that I want to finish up. I would find myself being beating myself up every time I even think about spending an hour or two playing a game I enjoy on the weekend. It might have to do something with me not thinking that I deserve to rest from work and that I need to be as productive as I can be to avoid wasting my time. Uh, send you Paul. Uh, stupid question, really, because um, we're men, we don't get periods. Damn. Yeah. Um. Apparently, I read that there is like a day where, like, there is like an equivalent man period thing. Um, yeah, and it's it's way tougher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's way harder. Yeah, it's much more. It's like much more horrible. Yeah, much yeah. easier. Much easier for them. Yeah. Um. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, um, gaming. Yeah, I, I definitely go through phases of that. Like um, when I finished Sekiro, it was that like good book feeling, you know? We were like, man, I've overcome this obstacle, but I've kind of played everything I need to in the game now for now. Now what? Now what? You know? Uh, get a different ending, maybe. I mean, in terms of video game guilt, like I just hit over a thousand hours in Destiny 2, so you know, don't yeah. worry about <laughs> playing video games. My Destiny career total now spans nearly three thousand hours. Like, <laughs> do whatever what? the fuck you want, man. Do whatever you Have want. Have you ever had a period there, Ruben, where you've just like been like, I just can't, I'm not interested, just want to do something All oh, right, else. yeah. I mean, I just sit there and uh, like don't play anything. Like, but usually it doesn't last that long, and I manage to. Like in that, I have like a few fallback games, you know, you always have the fallback mm -hmm. games, like Minecraft is one of them, you know. Um, recently I've managed to keep myself reasonably occupied, I can't, for me it's mostly, I get bored of music, I start getting annoyed, I look at my Spotify and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get that. Fuck all of these songs, I don't want to fucking listen to any of it. Yeah, and shit. nothing I just can scratch and, that, yeah. Yeah, nothing is doing it, nothing at all. That's probably just because I'm like, there's something else going on I haven't noticed yet. Yeah. Um, I, I got it most around 2015, I think, where it just kind of fell off gaming completely because I just hated all the games that were coming out, and it was around the time of like Fallout 4, Andromeda, a bunch of just trash shit. Halo oh, 5, yeah, Batman that year, Metal Gear Solid 5, Batman. Yeah, those were two really great releases that only one of which you gave a shit about. Batman was a good one. If I cared about Metal Gear, maybe, but. I've actually kind of been thinking about playing that game, but... The Witcher 3 came out that year as well. Again, that was when I fell off, though. So I, I missed... Yeah, that's when late. I missed, like, all the best games for, like, three years. Uh, Titanfall 2. Um, others. Dark Souls 3. <laughs> Titanfall 2. Others. <laughs> gaming. <laughs> just gaming. I just three years from 2015. Titanfall 2. Others. And then it wasn't until Mario Odyssey, I think it was, where I was like, oh yeah, I do like gaming. Let's game. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Vaguely, sort of. Specifically yeah, that. It wasn't even for any... Actually, no, I think it was for a particular reason. I think it was actually because of Destiny 1. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'd never played a game like that before. It's a good thing I hadn't really played like an MMO, because I, I, I would have just been hopelessly addicted to it. 
that with Destiny being my first one a game like yeah, of that ilk. That, even that game in here so much <laughs> yeah, <laughs> time you yeah. can put into it. And it's just, I don't know, it's just like a, a light switch. Was like, I just can't anymore with that. <laughs> um, I sort of... Yeah, I go through phases, for sure. You know? Like... I won't play a video game. Normally, it like you say with uh, Sekiro, you sort of it, it either takes one thing to get you back into to gaming or whatever, watching films or whatever. Like one really good one. Like it, it, I haven't played much shit for the past like three weeks at all, but I just started uh, Hades. Oh really? I'm jealous. That so I want to play that. Dude, it's so ridiculously fun and is now it's a, a game best played on switch do you think or just like play on um, anything and you'll have it's a good only time on pc and matter. switch isn't it yeah oh okay yeah that's yeah, uh, the two choices um it, if you're gonna be I, I just like it being on switch for the handheld capabilities mm. like i can go anywhere i can walk around tesco playing hades i can <laughs> like, a, like a kid on walk the game around boy. the russian embassy playing ga- you know, playing <laughs> hades wherever um only the russian embassy the others aren't too keen on it but the Russians maybe maybe the chinese embassy because isn't it the, yeah. the bastion developers yeah yeah and i know i know you like that game a lot alex yeah um, yeah i love bastion from what i can tell hades is just uh way better in every way like, it, it, well, they've made a lot of games in between, but they yeah, were mostly yeah. PlayStation exclusives. I think, and I got yeah, PS4 so, so late. Yeah, none of us played that. But yeah, it, 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 that's that's all it takes. One standout thing, and then you're just like, uh, I thought I was out, but they pulled me back in. <laughs> James, you have any? You haven't said anything for a while? No. No. Okay. <laughs> What, if we talk about games that pull you back in? No, we're saying about times in our lives where we've kind of fallen off gaming and just not been interested and... I go through that like every other month. Like, I'm of all people, I just, I will just, I game in excessiveness or I don't game at all. Mm -hmm. Like, before COD, didn't play any games. Played COD for a year, haven't really played, gone back into games yet. Because my mind works in strange ways. You need a battle pass. No, it's not that. I have to, I, I have to become obsessed with something for it to last more than a day. So if I if I watch a movie, I've got to obsess over that movie, or think about that movie. Like to get to the point of watching a movie, I have to obsess over it for like weeks. Mm. If I if I play a game, if if I don't instantly get obsessed with it, I'll never finish it. My brain works on like I've got to know everything about this thing to enjoy it. Like, I'm playing Warriors of Uchi. I like that game a lot. Am I reading up stuff about the, the romance of the Three Kingdoms and that era of Chinese history? Yes, because otherwise <laughs> I won't finish the game. Like, That's my mind enough. works on obsessiveness. It's like I, I can't consume anything without being obsessed to a certain extent. I don't know why, but that's just how my brain I mean, works. I, if, I'm gonna, if, I, if I'm yeah, going to watch like a Vietnam movie... I'll watch loads of shit on the Vietnam War before I watch the movie. So, I'm not, like, my mind's in that space where you're best to enjoy it, if that makes sense. It's how just everything works in my mind. Strange. Oh, fair but enough. at the moment, I'm just obsessed with shit Japanese games where you run around a map with loads of AI and you do. I'm, I'm obsessed with Warriors of Uchi. I love it. But I can't play it because I'm crippled. Fuck. Right. I finger. But yeah, well, you, I, I, there's too Bless many examples. You. Bless you, Jamie. I didn't sneeze. Huh. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. I'm. I get pulled back in when my mind wants me to. And on that note, sniff this. Sniff this. Sniff this. James. So. James. Go on, James. Good night. Come on. Come on. No, ah, come on, say it. Such a contrarian. Come on, just do it. Sniff, sniff this. Say it. say it, otherwise I'm moving you into mean idiots. Yeah, just for once. Just for once. Just conform say to it. group think. Just sniff once. This. Sniff this. Sniff this.
Sniff this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>